I'm about to show you some charts that should be the centerpiece of any discussion on immigration. No congressional action should occur without consulting these charts. In 1970, we had 203 million people in this country. Those people would be represented below this chart. What this chart shows you, what this green shows you, is the growth in the U.S. population since 1970. In 1973, the American people moved to a below replacement level fertility. That means that we have on average fewer than 2.1 children per woman. At below replacement fertility, we will eventually stabilize our population along with all the rest of the advanced nations of the world. Um, but we still had growth. This is the growth of births over deaths. And the reason is, is that the baby boomers, and I'm at the first of that bulge, we had to move through our childbearing years. So even though we had small families, there were so many of us that we kept growing. Demographers have shown us what will happen to the 1970 stock population uh, throughout the next 50 years. And that is, they took the people who were here in 1970, subtracted the deaths of those people, added their descendants, and subtracted the deaths of their descendants. And they found that this is what will happen. As you can see, the population by right now is very slowly growing. And in, in, in the next five years, it's going to stop growing. It'll grow a little bit more with the baby boom echoes echo. And then it reaches a peak, peak of 247 million in the year 2030. This is not a zero immigration level, however. This is replacement level immigration. That is, Replacement level fertility is when you have the same number of people being born as are dying each year. Replacement level immigration is when you have the same number of people coming in as leave each year. Right now, about 200,000 Americans leave the country permanently each year. This is what the Census Bureau tells us actually happened in the last 20, 25 years. Now, as you can see, our population growth has doubled over what it otherwise would have. This red represents Every immigrant who came since 1970, plus their descendants, minus the deaths of both groups. There's been as much population growth from immigration as from the natural growth from the 1970 stock population. Now, that has meant that we have had to double all of the additional infrastructure expenditures we've had in this country. We've had to build twice as many schools, twice as many sewage treatment plants. We've had to build twice as many roads and streets. All of the needs of this country have, the additional needs of this country, have doubled because of this radical new immigration policy of the United States government. In California, the State Department of Education has found that they have to build an entire elementary school every single day of the year a new school every single day of the year in perpetuity as long as the current immigration continues at this level just to keep up with the children being added by immigration. So what does Congress have in store for us right now? Well, the U.S. Census Bureau tells us that if Congress does not lower the level of immigration that we have right now, we'll be looking at a future that looks like this. As you can see, the numbers go completely off the charts. The Census Bureau tells us that this will be our future if immigration continues at today's rates. And this is what we're bequeathing to our children and our grandchildren by the middle of the next century. This is not conjecture. This is not subjective. This is not what might be. This is what will be if Congress refuses to lower immigration to something like a traditional level. There are some Americans who have very sincere feelings that we have to bring in immigrants in order to show our concern for the third world. Is immigration an effective tool? In this illustration, I use this gumball is representing about one million people. Now, one million people is about what we take in a year in, in immigrants. This is not a small number because, remember, this one gumball worth of, of, of immigration 
is driving every bit of this red. And each year, in our magnanimity, we try to rescue about this number from third world poverty. But how many people in the world are equally deserving of this kind of humanitarian concern on our part? Well, you've got to have some kind of benchmark, and I use Mexico. 25% of the immigrants in the 1980s came from Mexico. Depending on the value of the peso at the time, the average Mexican makes about one-tenth the amount of money that the average American makes. That's poor. I would say that's deserving of our compassion. But how in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican? And the answer is 4,600 million people. 4.6 billion people in the world are more impoverished than the average Mexican. If immigration is a policy to help the people of the third world, I want you to watch very closely. Don't miss this. Because I want you to watch to see how much the third world changes each year when we take the million people out of it. You see, there can never be any hope for the people in the third world except here where they live. Most of these people, 99 point whatever percent of these people can never leave. They're stuck where they are. They have to bloom where they're planted. If we care about these people, we have to figure out ways to help them here. Because we can do this kind of thing forever, but we won't make any difference in the world. There are many ways that Americans can help third world nations, but immigration is not one of them. And let's look at another issue here. It's that, that's the issue of the safety valve. Since the 1950s, people have been talking about how the United States has to take the overpopulation of Latin American countries, lest those countries blow up. Can that work? Well, no, it can't. Let me show you why. The fact is, is that last year, we took about a million people. But last year, the third world added births over deaths, another 80 million people into the impoverished persons of the world. And this year, we'll take a million people. And this year, the third world will add more than 80 million more people. And next year, if the U.S. government insists on bringing this exorbitant, non-traditional level of immigration and brings another one million people, these people will still add another more than 80 million people into the impoverished numbers of the world. There's no way that we can ever get ahead of this. We cannot be a safety valve. We could take millions a year totally destroy the social fabric of this country, totally destroy the environmental resources, ruin any possibility of the lower skilled people in this country having any kind of a decent standard of living, we still would not get ahead of this. If at this level of population, 40% of the lakes and streams in this country still are not fishable and swimmable, what are we going to do here, there, all the way up there? If Americans are beginning to fight over the opportunity to be in parks, on beaches, the national parks are being loved to death at this population in the country, what happens up here? If we are not keeping up with the education of our urban school children at this level, if we cannot build schools fast enough now, if so many Americans are feeling that the congestion and the, so the tearing of the social fabric is, is moving beyond acceptability, at this level, what is our hope moving on up? Now, you may live in a community that's little affected by immigration. But believe me, if this growth happens, there isn't a community in America that is assured of escaping the ravages that's now hitting California. And we must make decisions now for our children's and our grandchildren's future. If we allow this to happen, that future will be foreclosed. Now, what can we do? It's very simple. Congress merely has to lower the number back to where it was in 1965.